and this is Avinash and I was a recent graduate at BTH in computer science. Uh, yeah, I'm a full-time job seeker, so if you guys have any, you can just contact me. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm an age of 20, but not even a uh, work experience of Michael. So if you guys find something yeah, fishy, oh, edit step fishy. <laughs> so today I'm going to explain you about, uh, sorry, uh, just a brief introduction about uh, cloud security and how does intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems would actually be responsible in maintaining the cloud security. And one of such tool uh, is not IDS or IPS which can actually be used uh, because it's an open source. Uh, I would like to explain some of our review features of SNOT IPS. So, cloud security, I guess you uh, are experts in this. <laughs> so, why do you actually need cloud security? So, something which uh, gives us much more money because cloud, uh, um, it's actually going to adopt in the future and this is the future next generation being and we'll be actually gaining much more money see actually see 244 billion us dollars in by the end of this year so yeah what's uh, exciting the money gaining the money so and if you actually see we have seen some problems uh, according to the survey of uh, uh, security alliance Still, there are some companies are uh, lagging behind to adopt the cloud technology. So, yeah, due to the lack of data leakage and all those uh, problems, challenges faced by the cloud. So, yeah, the effectiveness of cloud computing is actually being limited due to these challenges. So, this is something which we like to work on and it will actually maintain the security of the cloud. So, these are some general threats, uh, security threats uh, in the clouds. So data breach, uh, that is something like maintaining, uh, that is someone stealing our data or, you know, uh, without our notice. And if you find uh, something malicious intermediate, uh, did you guys ever work with burp suit? Do you guys know burp suit? Oh yeah, that is something that uh, tool which we can actually manipulate uh, the user's request and uh, we can actually change our own. So yeah, it's really fun to play actually. Try it, but not in the public networks or public servers. <laughs> Try creating your own. So something like insufficient authorization or lapping test boundaries or these are general security threats uh, that's uh, actually uh, limiting the effectiveness of the cloud. So, here comes some traditional security mechanisms which are actually being implemented in the cloud to, act, uh, to defense those uh, threats. Uh, you guys have already known about encryption, hashing, digital signatures. Did you guys actually? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> then I can skip this slide. <laughs> so, this is one amazing technology, intrusion detection systems or intrusion prevention systems to actually maintain the cloud. So anyone here, network administrators? Oh, good. <laughs> then I'm happy <laughs> actually because the, these are the things would actually be helpful for the network administrators to maintain the uh, they, they, that makes their job easy. <laughs> they don't need too much work more upon the security things because these things will actually help you in finding the vulnerabilities within the cloud, these technologies. So what actually IDS is? Did you guys have any idea about this? Yeah, intrusion detection systems, that's cool. Uh, would actually help in identifying your uh, detections in the either net uh, in the cloud environment so this would be their key functions giving the information about the events that is actually occurring in the cloud and reporting it to the network administrators so that they can actually take the charge not and 
yeah that would be really interesting for the guys and what is ips intrusion prevention systems so when we actually think of ids uh, it just detects and just reports that oh something fishy is going on your environment please take care it's just uh, something but when coming to the ips this the technology evolved then if we can actually detect why can't we actually prevent them so this is the idea behind this technology ips intrusion prevention systems and so yeah ips actually stops attacks something like this by terminating the user if uh, if it's find something malicious in your network or environment it would do something like terminating the user's uh, connection to the particular host or blocking the target host or completely changing their uh, security environment or changes the attacks content so it would be something like this uh, this is just overview and we can actually make it learn learning based systems uh, this is a next this is called as next generation intrusion prevention systems but i have today i'm not going to cover this so why we actually need them why ids and why ips why because we already have encryption hashing all those technologies already being implemented so these are the some points because uh, an sc of uh, ids and ips so if you actually see that uh, most of the traditional mechanisms are, act, uh, are very slow and they can't actually uh, make it a further uh, detection uh, detection processor they actually they can't prevent it they just make it uh, to the just to the overview of the just for the environment right so by this technologies we can actually uh, learn more and it makes our jobs easier uh, that's really quite interesting and human work is very very less if you have these technologies so i ideas and ips in cloud so where we actually been deployed if you have actually known these are the four main security controls in the cloud like deterrent preventive detective and corrective and these ideas and ips technologies would be placed some something in detective security controls so like this uh, all the security mechanisms actually be placed in these four security controls of the cloud so yeah ideas and ips would be something in this uh, section of security controls in the cloud so how does actually ids detect the threats uh, it's something like these three detection methodologies will be using mainly something signature based anomaly based or stateful protocol analysis what do you actually mean signature based it's actually a rule of we will be having set of rules uh, so based on the rules uh, will be actually uh, the ideas will actually detect the vulnerabilities what the rule what does the rule exactly contain uh, that is uh, we can say that if uh, network should behave if this is the um, or uh, how could i actually explain it to you guys like uh, say suppose if an user is attempting with uh, name root just in username root or something uh, is actually attempting to uh, gain the access of a server with name root this is actually malicious right uh, root can actually gain the root access of uh, your server so it, it would say that uh, okay this is an something malicious attempt so based on that it actually detect the signature uh, the signature base will act, would actually use that su such type of technologies and coming to the anomaly based this is uh, one such thing that it contains the database where the actual procedures should not be that is if uh, networks the normal network will have the uh, mbps of 13 mbps 
per second uh, for a normal user and if it's uh, coming with a speed of uh, maybe 20 mbps for a long period of time then it's something considered as malicious that is the anomaly based will actually have a database uh, which uh, which is uh, not normal so based on that if uh, something which is not normal then if it if this matches then it will actually gain the uh, considered as uh, abnormal and it's uh, actually detects uh, it has vulnerability uh, stateful protocol analysis is something like uh, vendor developed universal profiles that specify how particular protocols uh, should and should not be used yeah these are the three main detection methodologies where the IDS actually uses so IDS technologies so where these ideas be deployed actually uh, in the cloud uh, it can it can be actually placed in the server sites that is where we actually maintain our crucial uh, data sets or files or something like that uh, network based that is the networks just between or before the firewalls like this we actually see so here is an we can actually place our sensors just like this so yeah we'll be using something like this uh, generally uh, to maintain the complete security of the cloud we'll be using uh, more than two technologies idps technologies actually like on a, either network both network and host mm, mostly they'll be using it and this is the host based deployment which you actually see our sensors will be actually placed near the host that is uh, where are crucial or the customers uh, data data will be placed so these are the most common deployment will deployment locations of uh, host and network based idps So, network behavior analysis and wireless is something to similar to the network based itself. So, wireless IDPS technologies are deployed where we actually use our wireless networks. And, yeah, that's it. And, SNOT IDS IPS. This is one of tool. Isn't that logo funny? <laughs> <laughs> it's big, right? Yeah, it's very tasty to eat also, of course. Yeah, it's not IDS and IPS. Uh, this, this is one open source tool, which we can actually use it for network security purpose. Uh, well, in my research, uh, while I was actually studying this, uh, about this IDS or IPS technologies like this, I have done some literature review about uh, 30 articles uh, of next generation IPS and found that snort is one of the tool which is available openly and they are using that for directly preventing the attacks or just for detection the attacks or is just for logging the malicious reports and then extending the, the technologies to actually further prevent the attacks so I find something snort is why why most of them are actually using the snort to actually protect their cloud environment. So there's something because it's a small, a very open source, and it's a, uh, first actually snort is actually designed for just Linux purpose only, but later on due to its availability and due to its uh, prevention features. Uh, it's uh, it's extend it's extended to Windows, Mac OS, and yeah, Solaris, all those operating system. It can now actually work on every operating system which you can imagine. So and it's actually fast and it actually be work on even 100 Mbps networks. Uh, yeah, it can actually uh, without writing any such sort of your rules just by installing the your snort it can actually detect or stop the attacks like stealth buffer overflow all these attacks just by 
uh, installing this knot itself. So there are actually three operation modes in SNOT uh, like sniffer, packet logger and network intrusion detection system modes. What are these modes actually? Yeah, this is some kind of working of SNOT. How does actually SNOT, how do we think the SNOT should work? We can actually make SNOT to work in these three modes, either to just sniff the network or including the sniffing just you also log your uh, log the packets uh, data of your packets and store it in your hard disk for further uh, analysis or future analysis maybe and network intrusion detection system mode that is our IDS or IPS system mode if you don't specify any uh, such technologies uh, or modes to actually work the not defaultly goes into the IDS mode so it directly goes to the IDS and it will detect uh, your uh, vulnerabilities in the network in which you have actually placed or deployed. So yeah, as not detection, we will be writing some rules in the snot.com file to actually detect the or to prevent the intrusions and if you actually see that uh, those are the rules which I have written on my own to actually uh, prevent the intrusions while I, while I was doing the research. So these are very simple and there are very flexible rules and very easy rules to actually prevent any most of the type of attacks in this knot. The first is this rule can actually alert the administrators the system or network administrators that uh, there is an attempt from the X IP address from X port to X to our uh, destined server of destined port and this would actually this rule would actually prevent the attack uh, this rule is actually written for the DOS attack uh, if it's a DOS attack then yo, yeah it will actually stop this so this is how actually SNOT detects and this is the SNOT architecture. Considering this as our packet stream, it will actually sniff. The sniffing process will actually go on and can you see guys? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it an, goes into the packet decoder where it will actually uh, decode the packets. and next stage is actually go for the preprocessors uh, here the, in the preprocessor stage uh, this we can actually limit it by installing our plugins uh, we can have libcap plugins and so on to, so that we can actually limit uh, or extend our detection or prevention capabilities and detection engine here comes our rules come into the place so what the rules which I have written and based on that it will actually detect the vulnerabilities in the cloud and finally the output it will actually log or alert the uh, administ network administrators. So this is how it will actually work and so overall conclusion of the presentation would be something like we need security in the cloud and there is an IDS an IPS tech amazing technology which would actually prevent uh, most of the attacks but uh, that's what uh, while installing or while regulating there's there's first the, there will be human effort but later on there it will be everything cool and if you actually implement this uh, by some artificial or machine learning technologies uh, learning based systems we can actually increase those uh, capabilities so yeah, and this is my contact information. So if you have anything or <laughs> you would like to offer me, so yeah, you can contact me. Yes, thank you. Yeah, sure.